All right, guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And today we are going to be talking about functions. Functions, as in most uh, programming languages and in most um, development, you know, engines, game development engines and whatnot, are extremely important. There's this principle called the dry principle, which essentially says don't repeat yourself. And the reason why you should use functions is to make sure that you don't repeat yourself and that you can always make your code base more reusable and more effective. So today that's primarily what we're going to be talking about and let's go ahead and dive right in here. So per normal we are in the third person game templates. I'm going to go ahead and open up the content drawer with control space. I'm going to go content. And for right now, I'm just gonna make a new blueprint right here. Uh, make a new folder first, call it blueprints. Boom, then I'll go ahead and double click here. Right click and I'm gonna do new blueprint class. This class will be an actor. An actor is a type of blueprint that can be placed in your scene. Essentially, it's an object with a transform. Boom, boom. Whenever you create a blueprint, we always score it with BP underscore. Then you can name it whatever you'd like. I'll name it tutorial since this is for a tutorial. And I'm gonna spell tutorial. So that one more time. Cool. Cool. All right. Boom, boom. Then, as always, I like to bring the event graph over here. We'll close the construction script, which we'll talk about today. And here's our blueprint graph. The to toggle between the two, you simply just click here. All right. So, functions. You can find functions right here. Um, functions are ways to create lines of code that let's say you would want to reuse over and over again. So just for right now, I'm going to create a the most basic uh, version of a function here. Okay. So let's say whenever the game begins to play and this actor is in the scene, I want it to print hello. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and save this, bring this in, bring this actor into the scene. Uh, you can't really see it. Here, why don't I come here? We're gonna add a, a thing to the viewport here, uh, just so it's easier to see. We'll just add a cube. Cool. And we'll say that's our new default. Compile, save. All right, drag this in. Cool, now we have this cube. All right, and as you see, when I click play here, we get our nice hello here. So the cube, when it begins playing, uh, as we would expect here from the event graph, it's gonna go ahead and print this string. Now let's say I wanted this to print multiple times. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and duplicate it, and duplicate it, and duplicate it. Then I'm gonna take all of this, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. All right, and we have a whole bunch of hellos. And as you can see, this works just fine. When I compile and save, we're gonna get, you know, one, two, three, four, five, like 10 hellos. And there they all are. And you might be saying to yourself, okay, well, why are you printing all these hellos? Well, let me go ahead and now ask you a question. Let's say that now I want to go ahead and change my code up. And I want to change all these hellos to hola, H-O-L-A. What would I have to do? Well, I would have to go in to each one of these and type in H-O-L-A. And not misspell it. <laughs> or I would have to essentially redo all of this over again. Now let me ask you, let's pretend that this wasn't hello world, let's pretend that this was something more complicated. How long would that take? And then let's say you changed it all to hola, or hola, and then you needed to change it all back. In my opinion, you would be here for a long amount of time, and there would be a lot of time in which you would just be taking, you know, old code that was made and duplicating it and redoing it and, and changing it and refactoring it, and it's just not efficient. This is why copying and pasting code, like you saw in this specific example, is a bad idea. Because oftentimes, when you find yourself copying and pasting code, chances are there's a better way to do whatever you are doing. And in this case, you would use a for loop or a function. Okay, so that is the dry principle. The dry principle is a massively important principle in programming. It essentially says don't repeat yourself because if you find yourself repeating yourself constantly, chances are there's a better way to do whatever you are doing, right? So we could do the exact same thing using a for loop that we've seen before, but today we're not doing for loops, we're doing functions. So we're gonna now do this using a function. What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to add a new function. I'm gonna call this function, hello. We'll call this hello function. 
boom. Then in the hello function, I'm gonna come here and now here I'm gonna go ahead and print hello. I'm gonna go ahead and compile and save this. Now I've created a new, think of this as like a block of code. Essentially whenever this is called, this hello function is called, it's gonna do whatever is here, right? This could be obviously not right now print string, but this could be chase a person. This could be a task. This could be many, many, many different things, right? But the idea is that functions make code reusable. It is dry. That is the main thing. Functions make code reusable or your visual scripts in this case. Okay. Now, in order to use that hello function, I believe you can actually just type in hello function and it pops right up there. And as you'll see here, I'm going to go ahead and compile and save this. When I go ahead and run, it works the exact same way as before. This is a great example of a function. Whenever you find yourself having to reuse code, put it in a function. It makes life better. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now and show you the power of the dry principle. We're gonna go ahead and have this function run. Now there is again a better way to do this, but this is just for example purpose. I'm gonna go ahead and this function run six times. Okay, but then now, instead of having it say um, hello, I want it to say hola. So now I'm gonna to come to the hello function right here and change this to hola. And just like that, when I go ahead and compile and save here and play, all of these have now been changed to the new thing, hola. And that is the power. I only had to change that one time versus the way before you had to change it many, 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 many times, right? And this is why the using functions is so, so, so important because it takes um, essentially code and it packages up into a nice um, little, you know, reusable thing that you can then call and reuse consistently over and over and over and over again based on in-game events. And that is what makes functions so special. All right, lastly, we're gonna go ahead and talk here on the construction script. The construction script essentially is a thread of um, um, blueprints that's gonna run when the object is created. So if you wanted to change the material of the object or the shape of the object, based on specific in-game events, you can do it right here in the constructor graph. So you could drag out here and essentially do all of the logic that you've seen before. Um, let's see here, we can just do a simple one. So I can come here to the material here. Um, this is obviously gonna be the cube. And now on construction, I can change the material from this solid blue to let's say this. Okay, so now I'm changing the material up, and as you can see, the construction strip is going. So now when I click play here, well, it's already done it, right? But um, essentially, if I like had a delay or something like, I don't know if you can have delays in the construction. Let's actually see. Yeah, no, you can have no delays in the construction, right? But this allows you to essentially create the, um, the cube here in the scripts. And also, this will run on runtime as well. So if you change uh, some of this stuff in runtime as well, it will also change. Generally speaking, like if you had a character and um, let's say they had a weapon equipped and every time they went into battle, you wanted that weapon to be the weapon equipped, you would do it with a construction script. You would say get weapon equipped from like the game instance or whatever and then set that as the thing in the left socket. So that would be a good example of using um, the construction script graph here. But this is also just a very nice solid example. And as you see, the material has now changed. Cool, cool. All right, last thing we're gonna to touch on here is the idea of using functions to take in inputs and outputs. I'm gonna go ahead and delete our old function here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new function here called adding um, numbers. So something super nice about functions is that they can input and output specific information. So we'll look at uh, two, two specific examples of that. First one will be inputting information. To input information, you just click on the function uh, node here and you come here to inputs. And you can actually now take in specific information into the function. So in this case, I'm gonna take in two floats. I'm gonna call this num1 and I'm gonna call this num2. Okay. All right, then with these two numbers, I can then do things with them, right? So I can now come here and I can add them together. So we'll just do add both numbers, boom, boom. And then we're gonna go ahead and print 
the addition here. So now we're gonna come here. This is then gonna typecast for us, which is super nice. This is the typecast from a float to a string. And there we go. So now it's gonna add these two numbers together. In this case, I was able to take in two numbers here as um, parameters, and then you assign these, treat these as variables. We don't know what these are when we're working with the function. I have no idea what these are gonna be, right? These values are declared when the game, or when the function is called. So now when I type in adding numbers, it's gonna ask for two numbers here, as you can see. This blueprint owns the function, so that will be the reference for this. And then here, I can actually create the two numbers. So let's say I wanted to add 100 and 50. This would be great for something like health and max health, where you don't necessarily know the health of the player at the time of the function call. Okay, so for example, I can have a delay now of, let's just do a two seconds, just for example here, three seconds, three seconds. And then I'll call this again, but this time I'll have it uh, do 50 and 50 so we can see the difference here. Okay, go ahead and compile and save. And as you can see, it's now going to take these in and I can also, of course, create variables here that then input into these as well. I could drag this out and then drag this into here if I so chose. Um, you've probably seen that before, so I'm not gonna dwell on that too much. I just wanted to show that too. All right, so as you'll see here, when I go ahead and click play here, I get 150 and then I wait and then I get 100. So that is a good example of how you can use functions to be more flexible as well by taking in parameters. Parameters are super useful because sometimes the information that you wanna calculate is not predetermined. Sometimes the information you wanna calculate is not predetermined. That is when you can use parameters or inputs to input the specific information at that specific moment in the game. A great example of this, I know that was very abstract, but a great example would be a player's health. You have no idea what the player's health could be at any given point in time. You can guess, but you don't know, right? So if you wanted to add to the player's health, well, how would you do it? Well, you would take in health as a variable and you would pass it here as a parameter. That way you always know it's adding whatever the current value of the player health is. Okay, all right, almost done guys. Last thing here, looking at outputs. So sometimes instead of inputting the information, you can also I'll put it back out. So I would call this now sum. Boom. Now I'm just gonna take the two numbers that were given to me, just like so. We're gonna drag them in here, drag this here. Boom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and compile this. Now I'm gonna come back here to my event begin play. And now it's asking for two numbers. And this time it gives me the sum of whatever two numbers are coming in. So I can go ahead now and print the sum here instead. Now I'm printing it right now, but obviously you could do a ton of different stuff with that sum. It doesn't necessarily have to be a print in this example. This is just for example sake. But as you can see, now it's outputting this information. And of course I could output various other things like, a, I don't know, a Boolean to determine whether it is greater, right? It is greater. Oh. That is greater, right? And then this could, you know, do a compare. So I can go and I can say uh, greater. So is number one greater than number two? And it'll, I'll put there, right? Uh, I misspelled greater, didn't I? Is G R E A T greater, there we go. Cool, all right, now I can go ahead and compile and save this, come back out, and there it is right there. So I maybe use this as like a branch node or something like that, but this again is just another example of how to add outputs so your functions can be more dimensional. You can take in information, do some calculation, do some stuff with that, and then output specific information. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this runs here. I'm gonna go ahead and click play, and as you can see, it works very similar to before, but this time where it's being printed is different. And there you have it, guys. That is pretty much a nice little basic introduction into functions, arguably one of the most important and most effective things you can use for game development. Extremely, extremely valuable. You should be using functions all the time like I do. So 
that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns on any of the blueprints or any of the topics discussed today, please feel free to leave a comment and I will uh, answer it as best as I can. And I will see you all in the next one.